Hello, welcome. I hope everyone is well. I've done it again. Look, I've cut part the top of my head off. I'm taller than I think I am. I think that should be okay, actually. I'm not going to try and change things this morning. Uh, so, welcome uh, to another daily dose. What a beautiful morning it is here in Manchester. I hope the weather is nice with you as well. And welcome to the first Tinker Like It's Thursday, uh, which is my favourite name, I've got to be honest, for any of the sessions during the week. Um, and in a Tinker Like It's Thursday session, we're going to make stuff and we're going to tinker with it. Um, so today is all about uh, robotics and we're going to make a robotic hand. Now, in previous sessions, I've talked to you about that some of these are going to be ideal for you following along and actually doing things as I do them. We did that on Tuesday when you did the uh, crazy characters algorithm with me. I think today might be more of me demonstrating it to you and then you can go away and have a go at it. Um, so don't feel, if you've got your stuff there, yep, great, you can start making as we start going, but don't feel frustrated if you can't keep up. Um, I will show you how to make this robotic hand and then after that you can go away at your leisure and make it at home. I'm just going to change one thing on my computer down here. Now, um, I'm going to start as well with a bit of an apology. Yesterday's stream, when I played the video um, of the children making their helicopters in the pool, it didn't stream very well. I'm not entirely sure why that is. I've got a couple of videos that I want to play in today's Daily Dose. Um, so I'm going to try a couple of different approaches to playing them. I'm going to try playing the actual video off of my computer and I'm also going to try just sharing my screen and playing something from YouTube. And then I'm going to watch today's back to see which works better. Um, and then I'll use that going forward for the other daily doses. So I'm sorry about that yesterday. It was all a bit jittery. I think it might just be because I'm doing all of this off of my uh, small laptop, which isn't the most powerful. So we will just have to see how we get on. Um, right, so we've got a bit of a, uh, a structure to things now, haven't we? We start by doing a bit of a register um, and also by talking about how I'm constantly amazed at the number of people we're getting tuning in. It's absolutely incredible. Um, by the time I went to bed last night, I keep saying this each day and the numbers get bigger and bigger. Yesterday's video had had over a thousand views. This morning, it's had about 1,600 views. So I don't know who those 600 people were making paper helicopters throughout the night, but well done to you. Um, I, I, I keep thinking as well that uh, it might actually be that a good hundreds of those is, is my mum watching with loads of different tabs open because she doesn't off sometimes quite get YouTube. Um, but they're still good numbers, even if you take my mum out of the equation. Uh, so keep sharing, telling people if you're enjoying taking part each day, keep sharing this with other people that you might think would like to be involved. Right, the register for this morning. Okay, now, top of the register um, is that, uh, this is an interesting one. In, in my normal week, I have a few different jobs, and it turns out that all of my bosses children are tuning in. So this is like the register, the bosses edition this morning. So first of all, to Bertie Adamson, uh, who's down in the south, in the lovely countryside there. I'm saying that way. I think south is that way. Um, I've been seeing clips of you taking part, or pictures of you taking part um, in the activities each day. Your mum's been sharing those across um, Twitter, you look like you're doing a fantastic job, so thank you for tuning in. Well done uh, to you. Um, we've also got Claire Pisanio. So this is a so boss, my boss number two is your mum. Uh, boss number one was Bertie's mum. Boss number two, Claire's mum. Seen the pictures or the videos of you doing your helicopter yesterday. Top job. And to also to all the other year four pupils at Berry Grammar Girls, thank you for tuning in. Boss number three, I've got a lot of bosses. Boss number three, Harley, seeing that you're taking part every day in this and you're actually writing up what you're doing and sending it into your school as part of your home, home learning. So that's brilliant to see that you're, you're taking part every day. In fact, I'm getting lots of uh, children sending in 
to the email drchipsdailydose at gmail.com evidence of what they're doing uh, every day. Um, and I'm really sorry if I miss anyone in this bit. I'm really, really sorry. I'm just trying to keep up with everyone. So other people to, to, to say about as well. Uh, Romy and Seren at St. Clair's Catholic Primary School. I work with your mum as well at Manchester. We've got Jessica Mann on the register today who has been tuning in. I don't know whether or not today you're tuning in with mum or with dad. Whose turn is it? I'm sure I will find out later on. Uh, we've got Harris and Issa from Crumpsall who have been doing every day the lessons every day. Ethan and Ewan Keeley, and I think I've got a picture of you on the blog. Rukea, uh, hello to you. Jack Thorley at St Paul's C of E Primary School in Longton, is that? I Sorry, I can't read my own writing that I've put down here. By the way, uh, you've sent in your crazy characters from a couple of days ago. They're now up on the blog, so check those out. Um, so, that's the register for today, but we're also going to go and jump onto the Showcase blog to have a look at some people's work that's come in. So, let's jump on here and let's do this and do this and then hopefully you should be able to see my screen and the website. So, let's go to the Showcase blog and look at some of the paper helicopters that came in from yesterday. So here's Jessica, who I mentioned, um, uh, flying her helicopter. I love your floor, by the way. Uh, I'm saying that because we, uh, we got the same one as them. Um, Rakea and family, I don't know whether this was caught mid-flight, these helicopters coming down. Ethan and Ewan, who I mentioned before, love the uh, dressing gown. Is that a dressing gown? I think it is, love the dressing gown. Um, Luke Hickson, okay, is flying his there in the front room. Great job. Hassan. Hassan's using the daily sessions as well to practice his writing. And you can see there that he's written up some of the instructions of what he did, which is super. Uh, Joe and Maddie. Now, they love the fact that they told me about their investigation question as well. So if the blades are shorter, it goes faster. That sounds like that's the conclusion they've discovered. So we've got their... Uh, videos here and uh, venturing on top of the um, climbing frame in the garden to test those as well. Oh, I didn't see you were in hiding in there. Um, the triplets, Harry, Lily and Charlie, uh, all having a go with their paper helicopters in the back garden. Uh, nice little looping gift there. And someone, now I'm not sure if that's Harry or Charlie, had the great idea of actually going up to the upstairs window and throwing it out there. Look at that. Great flight there. Uh, there's Harris and Issa with theirs that they've decorated. The Clays, Jessica and Harry. Look, look at that concentrating face there. We're, we're making uh, theirs. And uh, love the idea of actually going on to trampoline. Could you bounce and uh, throw them to get them even higher? Uh, and we've got two each there. I guess that's part of your investigation. And Joshua as well. Love, love the background, by the way, uh, in your... Uh, bedroom there. I assume it's your bedroom. Look at that. Flew beautifully. Um, we've had a couple of write-ups as well. Uh, I'm so sorry. Look, that's not how I meant to put that picture in, is it? That's not going to work if you if you let it go like that. So I'll have to correct that. So there we go. There's, um, there's the register this morning and there's the showcase blog. Uh, well done to everyone who took part in yesterday's lesson uh, on helicopters, paper helicopters, and that was with um, the Great Science Share. And I forgot to say, actually, if you're sending stuff in on Twitter, um, there was a hashtag for that, and now I've started saying it, and I can't remember exactly what it was. It's either Science at Home or Science for Home. No, it's Science at Home, and it's capitals on the S, A, and H. So I forgot to mention that yesterday. I will be mentioning that next week. Right, let's get into today's lesson, robotics. Um, and to start today's lesson, I want to share with you a really cool video of one of the most advanced robots on the planet. This is being developed um, over with an organization called Boston Dynamics, and the robot is called Atlas. Now, I find this fascinating. Now, I've subscribed to their channel, so I always see when they are uh, releasing new videos of what Atlas is learning or they're training it to do, because it really is cutting edge. 
Atlas is what's called a humanoid style robot, which means it's modelled to look like a human. It's got legs and it's got arms and it's got a body. And over the last, I think it was about, I think it was 2013 that it was initially revealed. So over the last seven years, um, it has been getting more and more complex. And what I want to do now is show you a video of what this robot can now do. Now, as I said um, at the beginning, I hope this video plays nice and smoothly. We'll see. Uh, apologies if it doesn't. Uh, we'll give it a go. I'm going to try with the video that I've got later on about the bowling ball and the feather, if you remember that from yesterday. I'm going to try streaming that one from YouTube and we'll see which is better. But check this video out first. This is Atlas doing a bit of parkour. Sorry, I'm distracted. Um, there's, there's a cat in my back garden. The cat um, is called Oscar. It's a neighbor's cat but he is the arch nemesis of my cat. They often end up fighting, so he's strolling through the back garden looking for uh, my cat. My cat's just fast asleep, so we'll be okay. I won't have to go and break up any cat fights. So uh, here we go. Let's uh, have a look at Atlas. Okay, now, wow, isn't that incredible that a ro robot can do that? It's absolutely phenomenal uh, that a robot can move like that. And, and if you watch the way it moves, it's modelled on a human. You can see it's using its own arms to create momentum, to swing and to turn. You can see it's balancing itself when it lands. It really is incredible. In fact, I've got, I, I think this is so fascinating. I've got one more to show you. Um, and watch this. In this video, it even manages to do a backflip. Watch this. if it's got this video's got some outtakes I think or maybe not <laughs> okay so one of the most so if you want to learn more about that remember what I said it's good to just be curious and find out more stuff about stuff uh, Google Atlas Robot. There's loads of videos online. Just by the way as well, there's a few videos online which are fake videos which show the robot fighting back. Um, those are fake videos. In fact, what I need to do in one of these Daily Dose sessions is a session on finding what's real and what's fake online because particularly with our situation at the moment with why we're staying in with the virus, I hear lots of people getting stuff from the internet, which isn't true. So uh, don't look at those videos. Go to the actual channel, Boston Dynamics, watch their videos. Now, our robot isn't quite, not quite as advanced as Atlas, but I think you'll agree, it's not far off, okay? This is our robotic hand that we're gonna have a go at making. Now, let me just switch to uh, both cameras here, okay, because I've started making it just to model how it's going to work um, And the cool thing about it is this is a bit of a mixture of kind of tinkering a bit of engineering But also learning about the science as well. Can you see if I hold it up to that camera there? I've already got one of the fingers which will actually grip 
as if it is gripping something. Can, can you see that? Let me just come a little bit closer. Well, actually, let's do it under the visualizer here. Watch, watch carefully. Here we go. There we go. You can see that we've got our robotic finger moving. Okay. Now, uh, it's really simple to make. Um, all you need to do, and uh, I, I've given the instruction, well, the list of resources that you need. You need a piece of card to start with, which is going to be a hand. Um, and then I said that you need straws, but at the moment, your mum and dad or whoever's at home with you, if you don't have things, they can't just go out to the shop and get things because we're all being encouraged to stay uh, in the house as much as possible. And I didn't have any straws. So part of doing these tasks, it's all about thinking and being resourceful and thinking, okay, I don't have that, but what could I use instead? So what I used was just a piece of paper rolled up with some sellotape around it, as if I've got straws. So you need your card, straws, and a bit of string as well, okay? So let me show you the first few steps to get going. I'll, I'll recreate what I've got here, um, and then you can have a go uh, have a go at going and doing this and adding all the other fingers in as well. So first step, um, you just need to draw around your hand or maybe get an adult at home to draw around their hand. Try not to disturb them when they're doing their work, um, but their hand will be a little bit bigger. So, and it might work a little bit easier. So here we go. Drawing, have your fingers nice and spaced out. There we go, there we go. Okay, Whoa, got quite a big hand there. Um, and so we're gonna cut this out, here we go. Now, this might just take a second or so. Like that. Now, what I want you to do as well is, I want you to actually look closely at your hand. That, that Boston Dynamics robot was modeled on a human. It's a humanoid robot, which means they look and they take inspiration from the way the human body works and they create that in their robot form. So just as I'm doing this, look at your own hand, look at your own fingers, bend your fingers. Which bits actually bend? How many different sections are there on your finger that bends? Because if we can try and reproduce our hand, our actual human hand, so this functions, this does the same thing, then that, well, that's really cool. Uh, so here we go, nearly there, two more fingers to cut out whilst you're having a look at your hands and how they move. And also, let's have a think, do you know the name of the parts of the body inside your hand which cause things parts of your body to move, limbs to move. Have a think about that. Right, there we go. So, I'll move those out there. Okay, so here we go. Here's our hand. Now, if you look very carefully, as I've asked you to, you'll see that our fingers are split into three sections. So I think, and when you bend them, okay, they go into one, two, three. Okay, so I think I'm going to try and recreate that in my robot. So they're going to bend into one, two, and three. That bend there is at what we call the knuckle, okay? Uh, and then we have the tip of our finger there. So there's one. Let's do bend our, this one into three as well, okay? It doesn't have to be exactly into thirds, but just try and do it the best you can. In fact, our fingers aren't exactly into thirds, but that bit there is a lot longer than that bit there. And finally, this one, like so. Okay, so now we've got a hand uh, with the fingers that are curved. And just because of the um, material of the cardboard, the fingers tend to want to go straight. If we pull them in and let them go, just like this one, they will probably then spring back out. Okay. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to use the string next and the straws um, and I asked you before do you know what it is that actually moves part of our body what you know what within our body which things are how do I phrase this 
which things, which parts of our body cause other parts of our body to move? Now, the answer is, it's two different things, muscles and tendons. So muscles, and you can feel your muscles, or yeah, there's a little bit there, uh, feel your muscles here. When those contract or relax, they cause other parts of our body to move. Okay, so if I want to raise my forearm up, I contract my bicep muscle here, and in it comes. Now, actually, in your hand, you don't have the muscles in your fingers. and The muscles are in the palm and in your forearm here, and they have these stringy-like things which run up into your fingers, which connect the parts of the finger to the, to the muscles, and they're called tendons. So this is going to be kind of like our tendons and our muscles all in one. Um, and what we need to do, just like I've done with this one here, is we need to add a section of straw just to guide our tendon on the first and second part of the finger and also in the palm there. Um, so let's do that now. So I'm going to do, cut off, uh, let's do the same finger here. So one and two, okay. Uh, oh, sorry, three, I needed one for the palm there. Um, and oh, find the sellotape. Do you know, I always thought one thing that they should teach in, skill, uh, in school that should be on the national curriculum is finding the end of the sellotape. Because it's always really tricky. And people always say, sir, sir, can I find the end? Can you, can you find the end of the sellotape? And now, whilst I'm doing this live, I cannot find the end of the sellotape. Let's, so, right, you need to run your, or your palm or your finger around. Is that the end of the sellotape there? Oh, no, it all could go terribly wrong here. Oh, yes, it is. There we go. So, oh, don't use your teeth like that. Use the scissors. Okay. Uh, and then what you need to do is you place uh, one of the straws just at the base of the finger there. Okay. And actually, you want to make sure you cut away the sellotape so it's not covering uh, the straw because otherwise the tendon will get stuck on that. All right. Then you place the next piece of sellotape, the next straw on the first part of the finger there. You can tell I'm concentrating because I've gone a bit quieter, like so. And that wasn't quite enough there. Let's get a little bit more on that side as well. There we go. And then on the next bit of the finger, okay, it's a little bit fiddly, but fiddly this, but that's good because it develops your dexterity, so your skills of working um, on little fiddly projects and just holding things in place and understanding about not pushing too hard on things. and It's all good stuff. So let me cut the tape away from that. Okay, now it's not, I would probably like to take my time a little bit more if I was doing this, so let's hope this, this works okay, um, but I'm sure you can make much better ones than this. So then what you do is you take your tendon, pass it up through, okay, uh, and this is how your hand works, it, uh, your fingers work, it's got these tendons which are like these stringy things which go up through, I haven't cut that tape away from there, let's do that, okay. And connect the different parts of the finger together. There we go. Through the last one. Super. Oh, there we go. Can you see that? Okay. Yep. Okay. And then on the very tip of the finger, a little bit of sellotape to stick it to the tip there, like so. Then trim your tendon down. So I think I need about that. And if you've done it correctly, hopefully as the tendon contracts, or the, sorry, the muscle contracts and it pulls on the tendon, we should see our finger grip in. Okay, just like the other one did. And there we go, a simple to do robotic hand. Okay, I've shown you, oh no, I've pulled my tendon out and I'm gonna have to operate. Uh, you need a bit more sellotape on the end one for the tent to secure the tendon. But there we go, that's how 
we make them. So your task today, give it a go. And don't worry about getting it too exact um, or the same as this. This is all about, remember, it's tinker like it's Thursday. Just tinker with it. Give it a go. Make, have a go at making it. If you do things slightly differently, no problem. Let me know. And send in your attempts to Dr. Chip's Daily dose at gmail.com and I, as usual I will put them on the blog. Now just before I finish today two things first of all uh, make sure your parents or whoever's with you at home has subscribed on the website to get the list of activities for next week so say to them they need to actually go onto the website which is www.drchips.weebly w e e b l y dot com and put subscribe put their details in and i was going to be sending that out on a sunday but now i'm going to send it out on a friday night because i suddenly thought if people are doing their shop over the weekend and because we uh people only want to now only go out once in the week for one shop then they can do it um with that shop at the weekend rather than it coming out on a sunday night um, and then finally to finish, yesterday I presented you with a question and there was an error in my question. Well, there was an error in my spelling. Uh, I showed you this yesterday. Um, the error is that vacuum is spelt incorrectly, but if anyone knows me, they know my spelling is appalling, atrocious. I'm not sure if I can spell atrocious, actually. Um, but the question was, if... A bowling ball and a feather were dropped in a vacuum, which means there's no air. So imagine we had this big chamber and we were able to drop a bowling ball and a feather within it. So we, in this same chamber, we took out all of the air. So there was nothing in it at all. Which would hit the ground first? And I have just been amazed with all of the responses. Fantastic to get so many people responding. Um, I had a few from people in my class. Harris, you sent in your ideas. Who else did I have? I had Ibrahim. But I must say to, I must give a shout out to Abdullah, who was correct in what he said, because Abdullah said that they would both hit the ground at the same time. And that is correct. And I'm going to prove this now, um, because the wonderful TV scientist brian cox has done this experiment so if i go to my screen and we go to this here now what i'm going to do the sound might change a little bit because i'm just Okay, um, I'm not sure if you could uh, hear any audio with that then. So, as I said.
something that we perceive to be light and something that we perceive to be heavy and we drop them, the only reason that the heavy thing tends to hit the ground first is because of the air resistance on it pushing upwards. Take the air resistance out and no matter what the weight of the object, it will fall at the same speed. Crazy, isn't it? Love science, love science. So there we go. Well done to Abtalu, got that one right. Um, I'm going to leave it there for today. I'm sorry if that bit of technology there, there wasn't ideal. I'm going to watch it back, see what I can do better. I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow's session is going to be fantastic. I've got an interview with Dr. Ed Reagan, who is a scientist. The company his, he works for creates um, machines and devices which are actually helping to develop a vaccine for the virus. So we're going to talk a little bit about the science of the virus, why we're being asked to stay um, at home, wash our hands and explore uh, the kind of whys behind the what you're being asked to do. So yes, you're being asked to wash your hands with soap, but why is that? Okay, yes, you've been asked to keep away from other people at the moment. So uh, we're going to focus on the science because I think it's interesting to know the whys behind the what's. So I will see you tomorrow uh, for Friday's Daily Dose. Bye for now, everyone.